So let's talk a little bit before we get into that. Let's talk about uh, blend, balance, and tuning. Okay? Uh, we might use this. We might not. Well, actually, we will use this. Okay, so everybody knows that this is basically the uh, outlay for, you know, your base bearing the antenna, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's basically the barbershop comb. Now, there's something wrong with this picture. It means the berries, for one, they interchange, but berries also interchange with the bases. I would say what we could do, let's make our own comb. Let's keep bases like this. You think that's fair? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, let's bring the sake of our We can make up another cone after this. Now, what do you think we should do with our berries? Uh, less. 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 Or like but berries are often above the lead, which yeah. puts them closer to the center. Mm -hmm. So let's say that baritones do this and this. Okay? Like a baby's bottle. And let's say that leads do this and this as well. And then what if we make tenors who sometimes come below the leads do this? Does that make sense? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I know it's over top of this. Actually, I guess it's over top Yeah. I didn't follow any course of uh, what is barbershop. So, <laughs> oh, okay, you want to know what barbershop is? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that seems a big question. Well, I'll tell you right now. This is barbershop. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Where you want your bass singers to have a fuller sound. You want your baritones, when they're close to the basses, and sometimes they're down there actually, to have a full sound like the bass. The baritones have a very interesting job. We'll talk about that in a minute. The leads, they're responsible for the melody. But when they're high in their register, they have a tendency to push their sound, like, ah! instead of, ah! you know? You want, and you want that lighter quality in the lead that comes up into the tenor world. But when the tenors are, are below the leads, and sometimes that happens in, you know, of course, they call it Chinese seventh, but I'm an Asian seventh. Mm -hmm. You're politically correct. Mm -hmm. uh, you need them to have a fuller sound. But when they're above, you need them to have a lighter tone because the melody is an inside voice, not the soprano voice, which is usual for non barbershop singing. The voicing for the lead is based on having tone in the middle, and that's the melody. So you have to have everything to balance so that the melody comes out and that the chord progression is solid and known. So that's why the bass has to be the foundation. Yeah. The baritone now takes on a role where they need to have the fullness of a bass when they're closer to the bass singing. And that, that's, that goes in two ways. One, when they're low in their register, and I say this for all parts, <coughs> low in your register, fill like a bass. Every part must do this. When you're higher in your register, light like a tenor. Every part must do this. So every part has this in it. Every single part. Now, when, but when you are, when we're talking about chords, if you have, like, let's just say, it's kind of sloppy, but you get the point. Let's say we have um, an A. So you've got your A and your E. There's your root and your five, okay? So you need a C sharp. And to create a seventh chord, you need your C sharp and your G. So let's put the lead on the G. Let's put your tenor on the C sharp. Okay, that's your A7 chord. Now look at the spacing between these two. That is your root and your perfect fifth. Now the perfect fifth, fifth degree, is going to need special treatment. The G is only one step above the lead, that is one step above or a third above, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're only a third above. So they're going to be fairly close. Mm -hmm. So what we want for them to balance is we want baritone and lead to be like this. Lead. 
baritone, because they're close, but you need a certain fullness on, fullness on the bottom to be able to bridge the gap between the bass and the baritone, right? So the baritone has a, a special job. Not only that, when they're close to the lead, they need to put a little bit of point into their sound, a little bit more frontal balance. And one more thing the baritone has to do on the perfect fifth, they also have to sing sharper. To create as much tension and distance as possible from the bass. So that's the baritone job. They look like a rocket. So if a baritone is a uh, 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 let's say that, 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 no, that's just, that's not me, but let's just take it, because it's easier for me to sing. <coughs> In the morning, we'll have a warm up, so then, if I'm a baritone, I'm like, ah, oh, that's going to match the lead, and then, ah, uh, widen out the bottom, and then, ah, uh, create a point, and then, ah, uh, create the lift. So you see those things have to happen. Could you hear that, that change? Okay, that's, that's, it's pretty subtle. <laughs> but when you get a lead that knows that they're down there and they need to sing just a little bit wider here in order to bridge down, but look at the distance between, <laughs> right? You've got like, you've got quite a distance there. You've got a tritone. Now the tritone is going to create a lot of tension in the chord. The tritone being the one, two, three, four, sharp four to the one, okay, for those of you who care. Um, so there's a good distance there. So the lead needs to have a lot of point to create the tension here. And the baritone, or the tenor, needs to have the fullness of the lead to reach down. And they have to have a lot of point. And then the tenor has to sing higher the lead has to stay exactly where they are. Not lower, not higher. They need to stay exactly, tuning wise, they need to stay exactly where they are. So that the baritone can sing up into them, but they want to create as much distance as possible between them and the tenor. Does this make any sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if somebody sings, mm -hmm, give me a baritone note, uh, Now let's try and add something more to that. 
when you're trying to lock chords, sometimes they sound out of tune, but it's actually not the tuning. Sometimes it's the vowel. Because um, the vowels have different formats. Each one of them has a different quality to them. So let's sing an ah, uh, a nice tall ah. Uh. exercises, you must do vowel work. You must. You cannot tune if you have different vowels. You just cannot. It will come close, but it won't be clean. And for me, I'm like a clean freak. It's my hot button. If it's not clean, I can't even feel what it feels like. I, I, can't, I can't get into it if it's not clean. Now the trick is to become clean without being clinical. So you have to do this kind of work in warm-ups so that they can transfer this work into the songs and slow your songs down so everything can be understood by the singer. It can sync from here to there. In my chorus, sometimes we work an entire evening on 16 bars. That's it. But what we'll do is we'll layer, you know, sound with tuning, with vowels, with artistry around the emotion. And we'll repeat that with synchronization, <laughs> energy through the diphthongs, energy through the word ends, singable consonants, n, the, uh, m, z, you know, all of these sounds. And we'll layer them one on top of the other and slow it down into a small package so that each member can feel what it feels like to sing at an A level. I believe that every chorus has sung an A level chord at least once, or taken an A-level breath, at least once. The problem, the difference between a C-level chorus and an A-plus level chorus is that A-plus does it consistently. Yeah. That's the only difference. They've got a little bit more education. There's more demanded of them by their director. And then they do it more consistently. C-level chorus, if you want out of C-land, if you're in C-land or B-land, if you want to get out of those ghettos, <laughs> I call it like I call it the B plus ghetto, like getting from B plus to A. That's a hard nut to crack. You know, it's a hard nut to crack. There's some basic things you can do to get from C to B that will take you there almost immediately. Going from B to B plus, a little more challenging. B plus to A, really difficult because the singers have to take all of this in and take responsibility for it themselves. When you have a chorus that takes responsibility. For the music, you are then at least a B plus chorus. If you're a director that is still trying to take responsibility for your chorus, you won't get out of B plus. They've got to become smarter and more independent. So this is all also about leadership. How you are as a leader, how you inspire them to take that responsibility for this stuff, but they have to know what it is. <coughs> the other thing I want to say about coning is it's not two dimensional. It's actually three-dimensional. There's three dimensions in here. Um, here's a better, oh no, let's use this one, it's cleaner. So imagine that, you know, each one of these is three-dimensional. Now you're, now you're working with different sound. So, mm -hmm, what was your note? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 
singing them. Uh, actually sing more like a tenor that happens to be really big. Uh, uh. So sing your note. <coughs> sing your note. Ready?
got yeah. close it and er. Yeah. So all of these vowels are very, very close. And a lot of our problems are that we over-articulate some things and we get trapped in words like Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie, Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie, hear those big engines are praying to start. All these different vowel sounds that come and go like this. Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie, Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie, hear those big engines are praying to start, and the whistle blowing, everybody's going to Dixie. See, all those vowels are ringing in the same spot, and that's what you want to do in order to get tone flow. So you get tone flow happening, you help them learn how to balance chords. And in, in every chord, there's going to be different challenges. If you have two notes that are, let's see, um, say, um, hmm, say the bass is on the five, okay? Bass is on the five, baritone's on the G, oh, we'll put the... Yeah, leads are on the A, baritones on the G. So the baritones and the leads are close. Close. Okay. So let's try. Ah, ah, ah. So ah, you can hit the snow. Ah. So you don't want to lift too much, but you want to create space up there without lifting the pitch. Okay? Then you're going to do that because of what's happening up here with the leads that we're going to get to in a second. Okay? But you do not want to lift that into that. That's your root now. They're going to get the root. And you need to create as much distance between those two notes as possible. Right? But you don't want to overdo it because you want that rub. Okay, so ah, oh, this just heavy there. Oh. Set it.
table against all of you, and they were matching it note for note, like ring for ring. So it's it's you know when you're having a hard time tuning a chord, or um, or lining up the balance of the chord, you need to go back to a little bit of music theory. You want your root to be really solid. Now I was asking uh, them to be on the root. So now let's see what happens if we make them be a little, little bit more solid and a little bit more point to their sound <coughs> and see how that matches. Are you ready? Moving up here. Lifting the sound out, okay? And. Uh, this with my chorus, they know what they're supposed to do with the note, not with singing it correctly and what synchronization happens. So I can stop directing the plan and I can start shaping the sound and the expression. Sound and expression should be, you know, really tight. People ask me, well, what's your specialty? What do you coach? It's like, I coach what's needed. You know, if it's sound, I coach expression. If it's sound, I coach expression. If it's showmanship, I coach expression. If it's the music category, I coach expression. Because I think everything goes through expression. You can coach sound all you want, and then if you put emotion on top of it, the singer's going to go, if I'm singing, Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie, Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie, and then I ask them to go, you know, it's Dixie, you want to go to Dixie. Don't you want to go to Dixie? It's like we talk to puppies when we talk to our first. You want to do this, don't you? You want to go to Dixie. You're going to Dixie. Yay! Woo! All aboard the boat. You're on a boat for Dixie. <laughs> and you good girls. So now if I add that in, then I'm going to get Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie. Get your TV for Dixie. Yeah. They don't know how to put the two together. You know, I always coach expression because they're going to want to express themselves. They're going to want to do it. And on stage, when adrenaline starts running, they're really going to want to sell it. They're really going to want to sell it. Not only from a visual standpoint, but from an expression standpoint, they're going to want to let you know, they're going to Dixie on a boat. It's on Dixie. I'm going on a boat. Woohoo! They're going to want to let the audience know that. So if they don't know how to do that with this, why are you working like for six months on this? They're going to get on stage and go, Dixie, all aboard me for Dixie, Dixie. <laughs> so you've got to somehow, right from the beginning of learning a song, if you take this information and build it slowly, just eight bars at a time, 16 bars at a time, however much you can get away with eight bars is great. If you can work for them like a couple hours on just eight bars, layering and all this stuff, then that is the lowest level they'll remember. When they get on stage and adrenaline starts running, their body will remember their lowest level. <clears throat> Always. So if you want a higher level, lower level, take a portion of the song and start layering everything together. Because that's all they're going to remember. When everything goes blank, they'll remember that. It's in their body. And then you can repeat it. There's no sense working for six months on one thing and adding something else for six months there. That goes away, then you have to work on that again. And that, like, you know, just do it right from the start. Do it right from the start. So let's try, let's try this. Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie, Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie. Can we just try that much? Do you understand that melody? Dixie, ready? And. Dixie, all the world, Dixie, Dixie, the world, 
Ticketing yeah. for Dixie. Okay, get your ticket here for Dixie, right? Get your ticket here for Dixie. Uh, let's go from the beginning. Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie. Let's try that. Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie. Great. What did you notice about your performance other than what the hell are the notes? <laughs> Okay, repeat after me. Dixie. Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. 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 Get your ticket here for Dixie. Get your ticket here for Dixie. Let's try it again. Ready? Dixie. Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie. Get your ticket here for Dixie. Okay, now what did you notice? Let's try this side of the table. You can tell me what you noticed, okay? Ready? Dixie, all aboard the boat for Dixie, Dixie, get your ticket here for Dixie. Great. So what did you notice, other than a few wrong notes? Now space. Okay, so let's work on your sound first, okay? Hmm, remember this, and this, and this, and that. Set it, build it, three-dimensionally build it, three dimensions. Keep your vowels tall. Protect the pipe. Protect the vowel pipe. Keep it focused. You ready? Dixie. And. Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie. Get that your ticket here for Dixie. So the second one is Dixie. One. Dixie. Four two. 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 Four Two, four, two, four, two, four, one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you get that? Uh, sure. Translation. Dixie. All aboard the boat for Dixie. Dixie. Get your ticket here for Dixie. Oh, ready? Okay. So set your first tone. Dixie. Ready? Dixie. Fat. Focus. If vowel, match your if. This way. Did you notice that they Dixie all aboard the boat Dixie Dixie get F was short. Get your ticket here for Dixie. The E vowels are causing them to shorten the entire phrase. <coughs> Remember how to make an E? Sing it. Relax your tongue. There you go. Dixie. Soft palate, not lowering the palate to the tongue. Dixie, Dixie, right? So if you breathe in this spot, breathe like you're saying it, 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 give it focus. Now keep every single vowel there, even the k sound. You ready? Yeah. You've got to fight to keep them open. E's and oo's are the worst offenders. You've got to fight to keep them in that is spot. Okay? One more time. And now breathe here first. <clears throat> Say your duh, 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 duh. Not duh. If you do this, you're going to get flat sound. Ready? And Dixie, all the water going for Dixie. Dixie, get your tickets here for Dixie. Okay, so you can hear that there's more sound happening, right? Now let's put expression on top of that. I want to use this this side again. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Moron. Dixie, all the water going for Dixie. Dixie, get your tickets here for Dixie. 
Dixie, all aboard, Bover Dixie, Dixie. But there's another one. All aboard, board, board, board. The boat, the boat, for, for, for. Dixie, Dixie. Get, um, get, same thing. Get, get, get your ticket here for Dixie. Right? You see how that works? The mouth there? Okay, so now we understand that the tongue doesn't have to move that much. So we can start matching our formants. That's going to help our tuning. We don't have to over articulate with our jaw. And now when we add expression to it, people want to add jaw. Like as much jaw as possible. Dixie, all aboard, aboard, Dixie, Dixie. They really want to do that. Dixie, all aboard, aboard, Dixie, Dixie. Get your ticket for Dixie. Very little jaw. It's all in the eyes. So this translates into your showmanship. It's 10 o'clock? Yes. Yes, of course. Okay, so we're going to be doing some of this stuff as we work. We're going to be trying to work sound, this stuff, into the chorus. Are you ready to try it? Now, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to turn to you and ask, what should we do next? I'm not going to tell what's supposed to happen next. I'm going to ask you, if you're a coach, and this will be your chorus, what do you think needs to happen in order to bring this sound together? Time to take my pills. Yes, indeed. I'm heavily medicated. Hmm? Trust me, it's a good thing. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, are you ready? Now, what's the name of the next class? Putting uh, this was the uh, putting tuning balance and blend into practice. Well, fancy that. We're ready to go. Good. Okay, let's do it.